And joining us now is Ricky Waisaki. Ricky, immediately as you as you make your entrance, everybody's wondering about the shades. Do we have a new sponsorship announcement? Right. Let's no. start there. <laughs> no, we don't. Uh, just just sunny. I mean, it's not really like warm out, but it's still pretty sunny. I mean, when you're driving, you know, the, the sun rays hitting your eyes. I mean, you gotta you gotta protect the eyes. Uh, all right. <laughs> I'll get down with that. All right. So my question is: Yesterday, you took some time off from practicing. And we saw the first appearance of the First Putt Initiative, which says that you're going to give away over 100 baskets and 10,000 discs in total this year. <laughs> I, that was actually a typo. I'm doing, uh, it was supposed to be, I, I said it right on Instagram, on Twitter is where I made the mistake. 100, 100 uh, baskets and, and, uh, and 100 discs to 100 different schools. So uh, actually, I said it wrong again. But it's, so it's, <laughs> so 100 I was going to say, school, I think I did that math. 100 school total, uh, each school is going to get a basket and 100 discs. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty incredible. Yeah. So, so uh, tell us the, about the experience yesterday as, yeah. as you were out there doing this. Yeah, no, it was awesome. I, I, uh, the foundation has been really started since the uh, beginning of the year. We really started kicking it in gear and getting everything dialed in. Um, but it was just uh, something to where I've, I've talked to a lot of the, a lot of my older buddies and the older generation disc golfers. Like, oh, I wish I would have started disc golf at a younger age. And, you know, something to where you know through the foundation, I'm able to, to start the kids off at a young age. So that way, when they grow up, they're they're pumped and thankful that they found the sport at, at such a young age which uh, a lot of people wish they would have um, had that opportunity when they were younger so I think that me being able to give this opportunity to them is it means a lot to me and I think it's uh, just a good way to grow the sport and it's it's just uh, awesome to see the genuine smiles on kids face when they find something new and they're throwing discs around that they never expected to <laughs> well and and speaking of finding it at a young age just to clarify for everyone when did you find disc golf I was 15, so I, I was like, I went to the assembly and did a little speech. They played like a highlight uh, reel of mine, get the kids all pumped up, and then I kind of came in and just kind of told them my story and tried to relate with them a little bit. It's kind of cool. You remember sitting down as a kid, getting all pumped for who's who's going to be the speaker, you know? So it's kind of it kind of touched home with that I was the, that I was the speaker that the kids got to uh, get entertained for for like you know 45 minutes or an hour or so. So that was fun, and it was fun. I got to. I got to putt with the kids, and they were, I had like a stack of ten putters, and I was like went to like thirty feet, and I made, and they were like counting one make, two makes, and they're all like screaming out loud as I was making. I made, made nine out of ten. Uh, I missed one putt, but they were like counting with me, like like all pumped. It was cool. I feel like they could have been there all day just counting <laughs> your made putts. Okay, so my last question would be: over the last couple of years, you've averaged ten fifty six golf here, but that's only been good enough for fifth and third, respectively. What are you going to need to do, and what what is it going to take to win out here? Yeah, I mean, this this course, as you can see, with, with the ratings and how how low the scores are, it's it all depends on the on the the conditions. I mean, you can you can shoot 10, 12 under out here on these courses or more uh, if there's no wind. But when it gets windy, uh, these bunkers, the water, a lot of the OBs are way more in play than they would be with without any wind or any condi any uh, rougher conditions. So um, I feel like I play well out here. You know, I th I think it's a lot of you know a lot of the par fours are, it comes down to up shots you know you got to have good speed control coming into the greens with bunkers uh real close to a lot of the greens a lot of ob and and they even tighten the greens up a lot more this year which i'm glad they did because um yeah with, with it being a little bit more of an open course it adds a little bit more of a, a you know upshot game is definitely more in play uh and so you really got to control your shots a little more a lot more than normal with the with the more ob but uh, for me uh it's just uh you know it's if i can get off the tee well and and uh, put myself in position to make some putts and make some good up shots i can score uh pretty low all right. Well, let's hope we get some of those kids out here to count up all those made pots. Here's Zoe and Nike. <laughs> Congratulations on the foundation, Ricky. Super great work. We're excited to hear about it. Thank you for sharing. Um, I just wanted to ask if you had a – first of all, your social media is looking great. A lot of disc golf in the off season. What's your favorite disc golf highlight in the off season? Oh, let's see. That's tough. I mean, I, I think – a highlight as a whole is just all the the media that the players are getting i think with all the contracts moving around not just one one in particular i, th I think that the sport as a whole there's a lot of people wanting to know what the, the top players and what all these people are doing and i think that that's that's cool um that there's a lot of people that want to know what what the top athletes of our game are doing uh what sponsors they're getting where you know what company if a lot of switches in the off season i think it that's just cool it shows that the entertainment value in the sport uh, is is there, and the people are entertained by the top players, and that's you know a big reason why we're here to, su to supply entertainment, uh, doing what we do best. Absolutely. And then just one last question: 
Um, congratulations on switching contracts to back into the trilogy. And can you let us know favorite couple of molds in the bag for this weekend and or the season? Yeah, so uh, definitely. So I've got some uh, Orbit Heart, uh, Orbit Felons and uh, my Tour Series Moonshine Harps. Those are the two uh, great discs that I'm going to be leaning on a lot out here at Wild Horse and then um, some Enforcers. So uh, those are the three molds that I'm going to be throwing the most. And, uh, you know, it's been great uh, switching and using dynamic discs. And, and it's kind of a new found, uh, new motivation, new contract, new year. And it's, uh, it's kind of fun to learn and have to conquer a whole new bag. It's kind of a fun little challenge for me. And uh, it's, been, it's been a fun off-season uh, learning and dialing in all my new discs. Great. Well, good luck this weekend. I'm going to pass it off here to Mitch. Thank you. What's up, Ricky? It's Mitch with Gatekeeper Media. Uh, in 2021, you parked 17% of every hole that you played, which is insane. The highest in the world of any other player, MPO, FPO. Switching sponsors, what are some things maybe you're leaning on to be able to put it close? Obviously, you put the dagger in your hand. We know it's, it's deadly. It's going to happen. But what is it, you know, off the tee, what has been leaning on that? Yeah, yeah. So um, I think a dagger and, and the harp as well, I think that yeah. – um, I was at my best throwing up shots, forehand and backhand. Uh, the harp is just, yeah. it's, I can shape that disc so well. Uh, and I think my upshot game is gonna, gonna do a lot better. Uh, and I think it's gonna be you know, at, a, at a new level, which I'm super excited for. Um, but yeah, I think that over the years, I think my, my, my driving's increased and gotten better. And I think that's something I'm, I'm very proud of. And I think it's something I'm building off of this year. I, I spent a lot of time in the field. I, I feel like my swing and uh, my drive is, is in a great spot right now. Uh, especially with my new disc, I'm throwing far, throwing accurate, and um, I'm hitting my line. So, um, yeah, who knows? Maybe I can uh, beat that 17% stat this year. And uh, that's, uh, as an athlete and as a top competitor, you always want to have something to shoot for. And uh, it's going to be fun to try and uh, try and outpace myself this year. That's awesome. One last question for you. Um, with a new contract coming back to Trilogy, a lot of players in their contracts have it in there to be able to design discs, have their own line of discs. Is that something that you're working on and something you're maybe excited to be, be working on in the future? Yeah, definitely. So uh, the, the harp is going to be a staple in my bag. And then another disc that I'm working on, uh, one of the seven discs, I actually just had a meeting with Dynamic and the whole crew over there. And we're uh, already in the works to get all, all the discs out. You know, not sure exact release date, but um, the first approach disc is going to be like similar to a harp but have a little bit more over stability to it. And, uh, and it's gonna have a little thumb track on top. So uh, I just like the feel of a thumb track on top of an approach disc. I just feel like it's comfortable and fits well in my hand. So I wanna get it out to as many people that wanna try it as well. So uh, yeah, that's the first disc in the lineup. That should be out in the next month or so. Sweet. Uh, and, that, and then every other, all the other discs will follow after that. Awesome, well, that's great, man. Good luck here this weekend and the rest of the season. Thank you. Awesome. Hey Rick, Matt Rothstein, PDGA. Uh, congratulations on, on a big off season, and uh, you were the PDGA Player of the Year last year. Last year there was only two majors to be contested. Um, this year there is four. A lot of opportunity for you to come out uh, your first year with a new contract. What are your goals for this year, and what what would you consider to be a successful first campaign for you this year? Uh, for me, it's always been consistency. Consistency with every part of my game, and then within every part of my game, consistency in the tournament. Uh, and so for me, that's kind of where I feel like I set myself apart is you know, I, I try not to take weeks off mentally, which is tough, but, uh, you know, when you're, when you're out playing week, week in and week out, it's, you know, it's easy to check out mentally, but uh, it takes a lot of uh, mental stamina to, to fight and grind every single spot, every single stroke. Uh, and that's one of my goals this year is to stay consistent, stay in it. Um, even if uh, maybe I don't have a chance to win come the final day, try to get the best finish I can uh, and, and wake up the next week with a, with a new opportunity to, to win that tournament. So uh, I just feel like I want to have solid consistent finishes and if I do that give myself chances to win you know hopefully I can have another five six seven uh, win season like I did less this last year or more thanks so much Rick thank you